Hello, my name is Erica Harris, and this is the talk of the day with the Detroit Babe. All right, so Erica, um, we're here with you inside of your salon suite, um, and talk to us about location. I am located in Gross Point, mm -hmm. um, Michigan, of course, mm -hmm. um, on the corner of Kirchville and Cashew, mm -hmm. and the My Salon Suite. We have like a number of suites. And that's it, I own one of the suites. Yes, yeah, so when it comes to your location here, how long have you been here? I'm actually one of the <laughs> eldest. Mm -hmm. I'm probably the last one that's been here the longest. Wow. So I actually came here when they opened. Well, it was like a couple of months in. I think they opened in October. So, so 2014? 2014, I've been here since 2014. Awesome. Yes, I have. So um, when it comes to your profession you're a cosmetologist mm -hmm. and uh, talk about some of the services you offer um i offer a wide range of services um majority i do a lot of colors mm -hmm. cutting and extensions that's what i'm known for my color and my extensions i am a, um uh, an instructor in the micro link yes. extension so and i noticed one of your posts on instagram you did an, another type of wefting a special wefting? Yes, that's the um, weft microlinks, okay. which I'm really kind of uh, liking that a lot more people are um, branching, gravitating to that because um, there's nothing wrong with the other extension techniques. It's just that it's a lot more healthier for the hair because the hair can be more free. Okay. No braids, no glue, um, no adhesives or anything like that, but it is a high maintenance extension service. It probably take less time. It takes less time. No, it takes more time to install, but it takes less time for your daily okay. um, maintenance. Maintenance, huh. much less time. Actually, less heat. Wow. Um, most of the time, my clients don't have anything to do. They'll just pull their hair up in a bun, and when they come in, the hair still looks like it's done. And it lasts for about nine weeks okay. with maintenance. With like every three weeks, they come in and get it shampooed and tightened, oh, etc. <laughs> All right, so um, you've been here for 14 years, but what's your background? And about how long have you been a cosmetologist in general? I've been a cosmetologist for about 24 years now. Wow. So in August, it'll be 25 years. <laughs> okay, so, congratulations. Yes, I, I get lost in translation sometimes with my years because I didn't realize it's been that many years. But, yeah, it's okay. been that long, yeah. What made you get into cosmetology to begin with? Actually, it's kind of a cute story because I never I was going to be a, an attorney okay. okay isn't that something yes. totally opposite <laughs> but hair has always been in my family okay. so I think I was about 12 or 13 and one of my younger aunts had like a hair catastrophe for her prom mm. and I redid her hair with one um, bobby pin I did her French roll wow. and I don't even know how I did I just redid it yeah. and I was really shocked that she trusted me to do it but her hair was awful so I was like can I fix it and she let me and it was after that I started doing hair at home and I just grew a long a long strong passion for hair okay and my aunt does hair my mom can braid one of my other cousins braids but I'm the hairstylist okay so it's just a long line of people it associated is. with hair yep and creativity okay. mostly yeah talk about the name of your salon and how you came about the name my salon is called hair artistry of e yes and I actually came up with that name because my name is Erica, and everybody calls me E, yes. E, 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 E. That's all. And I was trying to think of what kind of name could I come up with, you know, something that's not too difficult, not too catchy, but just E. Exactly. So I said, here are she. Okay. So that was it. And so in speaking of E, you recently trademarked your E cap. I did. So do we have any to display today? I do not. Okay. I wish I did, but I don't now because I'm taking a slight pause because okay. uh, for the production of them. Um, my mom, which she's a seamstress, okay. she's creating me a silk lining, set oh. lining to protect the hair. So mm -hmm. we're kind of in kind of a brief construction. But upgrading. I think, yes, <laughs> upgrading. But um, and I also recently changed to make them interchangeable, so people can change the different pieces in the caps. So okay. they can order interchangeables and still keep the yeah, same so cap. That's smart. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, so, I'm excited about that. Oh yeah, and this all basically snowballed during the um, pandemic. It did. We were on break. It did. Um, so it was kind of something that you already planned on venturing into, or I always 
did it where I would just throw a hair inside my hat. So I was trying to come up with a way where it would be more permanent and a little bit more stylish yeah. and convenient for women where it wasn't like they, somebody could just tear their hat off or exactly. something like that. So a little bit more stylish. Yeah. So I just came up with doing it with the fedoras and the basic baseball cap for now. Yes, yes. I think those are two cute, very classic styles. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I do have a turban one, but I haven't did. I haven't mastered the intricateness of it. Understood. Yeah, understood. I'm gonna show you that when I okay, turn the camera nice. on. I think you'll like it. Okay. Yeah. You have bundles. I think that that's a newer addition. It is. My actually, my reason why I have bundles because people kept bringing me kind of hair that you didn't like. Yeah, mm -hmm. it just was bad. I haven't really broadened my horizon with oh packaging and branding a hairline because that's a lot of work. It is, but I just always like to have hair on stock for my clients. I think that's smart too because, like you mentioned, quality control. It is, it is mm -hmm. because if they bring you bad hair, that's more work for right. you. It don't matter how good the install. <laughs> it does not, and then they'll come back and probably like a day, maybe two, maybe a long, just a week is a long. If it's bad here, yes, absolutely. And You're losing money, period. Losing money because you want to make them happy, you know. Absolutely. Did you ever have a full salon yourself, or like, were you? I did. Oh. I had a salon from 2005, no, 2008 to 2012. Okay. And um, I liked it a lot, but I learned a lot too. Um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and. It's a lack of, I don't know how to put it in words, where our community needs a lot more um, access to startup capital. In that time, they weren't offering as much as they're offering now. Yeah. I would say that. So you I sacrifice a lot. I did. Yeah. I was using, I was rolling funds around, and I could. I was trying to make it as professional as possible. But when you have a lack of capital. But I literally like um, when it comes to your own lifestyle, you can't even really advance. You can't. You can't. <laughs> I, I was, I was making money and I had people in my salon, but I still had to keep. It was just. You never seen a heads never up. Never <laughs> seen a heads up. So I did. I ended up eventually closing. I went and worked in one of my friends' salons for a couple of years, and I seen this, and I came here. Yeah, yeah, I think that it's such a, um, such a popularity when it comes to salon suites in it general is. because people just. They want their own privacy when it comes to servicing their clientele without the overhead. Exactly. So that was the most enticing thing for you? Yeah, it was. And because I'm a seasoned hairstylist, I just really got um, a little exhausted with the salon environment. Okay. That Not that it was a, so much of a bad thing. It's just a lot of layers that come with yeah, it. Yeah, and like you were saying, like the privacy and... I just like the inclusiveness where you can have your privacy with your clients. True. And then thinking about the, I've never been a salon owner, like a whole huge salon, but it's a lot. I, and I think about how you have to micromanage so many people. It's a lot. So, Personalities. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, I'm a people person. Mm -hmm. It's, I get along with pretty much anybody cause I like to respect everybody. Yeah. I think that plays a big part in communication with people it does. and talking direct and just respecting what a person says and mm -hmm. just moving on. But the salon environment, it was just just too much for me. Yeah, yeah. It was totally. it was a lot. You have to have somebody else um, manage that. Yeah. I think, and if I, you're gonna be a stylist. And that's the one way a lot of the like the brands do it. The huge brands. Yeah, they have somebody else manage it for them. Absolutely. Yeah. So when it comes to like your day to day, like what's your most common or consistent service that you offer? Cut and color. Mm -hmm. Most consistent. I do do a lot of extensions, but mostly my clients come in for cut and color. Like pixie cuts? Or? I do so much. Yeah. So my majority is not more pixie cuts. Mine will be more layers and trims okay. and um, yeah, more layers and design cuts. I do short cuts too, but more dominant of longer and layery styles. Okay. And nice. texture style. Mm. People, a lot of people get into the natural looks now. So, yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I'm really good at cutting. Yeah. So I can cut with textured hair, straight hair, whatever. That's so. a skill. It is, because <laughs> you can really mess up quality hair. Yeah. If you don't know what you're doing, they'll go home and have a mess on their head. Yeah. <laughs> so I think about how um, a lot of uh, people that I follow online are mm -hmm. like uh, brand affiliated. Do you they have are. a particular brand that you are sponsored by or work specifically with, like you prefer? You know, that's, I'm glad you asked me that because I've really been trying to 
kind of figure out which brand I want to stick with. Right now, I'm currently using Olaplex and Purology. Okay. And the reason why I picked those lines is they're 100% natural. Mm. They're not animal tested. Mm -hmm. um, I've been finding a lot of products that they target for uh, women of color are really bad for us. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I tried to really research and find some good products that we could really use that didn't have all these chemicals in it, bad chemicals and things that attribute to us badly physically exactly. that we don't really realize it that it, it does mm -hmm. and i was really surprised at how a lot of those products did yeah because yeah. so many stuff just gets normalized you don't do the research until exactly so <laughs> i love those two products i did a lot of research about them and i really do so far that's what i'm kind of leaning towards those two Okay. I noticed that you mentioned about working with Bonner Brothers. Did you do preventing or instructing? Or? I did. I was a platform artist oh, with okay. them for about four years. Okay. So I really, I had a ball doing that. I used to travel and teach other hairstylists different techniques through them. And, you know, of course, sell their product line. Yeah. That was really, that was a lot of fun. I could imagine. Yeah. Like, does it take a lot of... How do you, is it like a thing, like they reach out to you because you caught their attention type of thing? Well, what I had to do, actually, they had, they used to, they don't, I don't even think they do it like this anymore. You would have to go to their academy. Oh. Um, it was like a weekend academy. They flew you out. They paid for it, everything and stuff. And then at the end, it was a competition. And then they had judges to actually select a platform artist. Wow. And then they would, after that, I got the position and they would call me for different jobs. Nice. to teach in different states and stuff and then of course at the big brown and brother show so that was really exciting i used to love that yeah that's yeah. so cool a way to fit in yeah. travel work oh it was so exciting and sell in other places it was I, I i met a lot of different people um, a lot of people that did different things that was really exciting in the hair industry and i learned a lot about products okay. that's what started me kind of researching what's in products and stuff and how they affect us when i was working with them yes yeah. So speaking of products and what you learned about it, like what are the, the things that you always advise like some of your clients to look out for like with aftercare and things like that? Like what are some of the suggestions that you make for clients? I always tell them to go for the lowest amount of alcohol in any product, of mm -hmm. course. And sulfate free is always good. And tr read the back of things. I Just think a lot of times people so them. right, or they'll watch commercials or they'll look on Facebook or so and nothing wrong with social media, but you it's always good to have your own knowledge So read the back of things and make sure that it's not animal tested because when you animal test this comes along with chemicals True. Or certain chemicals that you should not have even anywhere by your body at all So yes. I always tell them to read 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 Ultimately, yeah. Like I don't think any hairstylist just wants to just end their career just mm -hmm. doing hair like what is next for you? I've always wanted to open up my own cosmetology school. Okay. I've always wanted to do that. I used to teach at Paul Mitchell, too, okay. in Sterling Heights. Mm -hmm. And I always wanted to open my own school. And I wanted to make it, like, not a comfort school. I wanted to have the professionalism in it, but more of a um, where um, insecurities wouldn't be an issue. I don't know how I'm wording that right. but Yeah, so basically an outreach center. Exactly, because a lot of girls who don't have um, opportunities as other people do, they don't know what kind of gifts they really do have. Okay. So something like outreach somewhat, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay. they don't even have that in schools anymore. That's very true. Yeah, they used to offer cosmetology, um, all kind of extracurricular. Mm -hmm. They don't have any of that anymore. So I didn't know that. my end game would probably be owning a hair school, a small one probably start. You never know. Yeah. How never far, know. How far do you think you'd have from, from that goal? Um, see, I'm really getting up there now. So, I don't want to be on my feet forever. Mm -hmm. I just don't. So, I would say in the next probably five, no more than ten years. Okay. And that goes pretty quick. Yeah, that's true. But I'm thinking five. Okay. I noticed that you do one-on-ones, too. I do. I love those. And so, like, are you still marketing for that? And how do people reach you You know what? That? I haven't done any marketing lately because I'm kind of trying to... With the ECAP, I'm trying to micromanage and get myself a little organized because I'm a tourist, so I'm a jump in at a person. So um, I haven't been, I'm glad you said that too, to get me back on the ball with that. But uh, I haven't been marketing yet, but I do like the one-on-ones. Mm -hmm. I really like the one-on-ones. Oh, it's still available. It is. Oh, definitely. Yep. So how will people reach out to you? They can reach out to me. They can um, direct message me at on Instagram at artistry at E, or they can inbox me on 
Facebook, okay. and it's under Erica Harris, E R Y C K X, or you can email me at hairartistryofe at yahoo.com. And if you email me, and I have a website, I don't know how I forgot about that. Yeah. It's www.artistryofe.com. Nice. And you can always message me on there. And then on my website is all my information. With awesome. classes and everything. Services as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. everything. And you do online booking too. I do. Okay. Yeah. Yes. And they can book through the website as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So I appreciate your time today. Thank you. This is, I love this. Yeah. This is really enjoyable. I appreciate it. Thank you.